We don't call it the reaction show. No. So don't be prepared to receive reactions from us. We're here to overreact, and you're here because that's what you want us to do today on the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, no, my man doesn't even have a mic. My man's out here coming in. Nothing, no sound. It's not off to a great start. It's like the Georgia football team. We don't get off to great starts here on the pod. I think it's back up and running. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time, though. He's Clint, and I'm Daniel, and um, it's Saturday night, and Clint's gone, but I assume that he'll be back. It's the overreaction show. Listen, we just saw Georgia. Uh, complete another perfect regular season, take down Georgia Tech. It was closer than we wanted it to be. It um, was, you know, there were some moments there that were felt really good. There were some moments that felt really terrible. We're going to talk about all of them. Um, uh, and then in the third segment, at the beginning of the third segment, for our third segment listeners, we have a special announcement. We're giving something away. To everyone who stays around for the third yeah. segment. And so if you're here, yeah, we're giving you left. And I said, we're giving, we starting to I give com- things I away. I come back and my man is just out here saying, take the pod. I gotta, I gotta get this back Clint, together. Loyal Clint has segment. purchased things that I'm going to give you now. This it's man just, is literally writing checks with his mouth that I have to cash. That is accurate. Now, um, that's coming in the third segment. So stay tuned. By the way, Alabama fan, if you're here, no, welcome to the show. Take off the if. We love you. You love us. And it's it's great to be together again. Let me get out in front of it. We are going to destroy Alabama on Saturday. Here, here we go. It's uh, multiple scores. We're talking about a multiple score win. Um, it's It's ugly what's going to happen. But we got plenty of time to talk about that. Let's talk about we Georgia do. Tech because there was some ugly here. But that's not where I'm going to start, Clint. We are going to oh. get to that. We're going to talk about the defense. You're not going to be able to stop me. I, it's That's what the people have, want. The texting in the middle of the game, I knew there's nothing I can do to quelch this man's fire of hatred. So we're going to get to that. But First Daniel, of all, everyone on the subtext, we love you dearly. I got a little quiet there on the subtext yeah. because, yeah. You, I mean, let me start here, though. Kendall Milton did nothing tonight that surprised either one of the hosts of this podcast. He did nothing that I would even deem spectacular for Kendall Milton. He was just his usual dominant self. You know what the difference was tonight? What is it? Dejan Edwards coughed up the ball on the first play of the game, put it on the ground, cost Georgia a touchdown. And so the coaching staff said, guess what? We're going to feed number two, and we're going to give him a a bulk of the carries. And we have said all season, that man thrives under a workload, Clint. He he wants the ball. He thrives in those conditions because he is a big, physical, punishing back. But he's also got moves, Clint. He can move that body. I'm talking about Kendall Milton showed me some things. Uh, he was averaging six nine point six yards per carry at one point right. in this game. Nine, let me nine point six. So again, for for those of us who struggle with the concept of footballing, mm-hmm. if you handed the ball to him, a uh-huh. first down was averaged uh, nearly wow. every single time. This okay. man is him. He's fully healthy. There were three plays in particular that showed me great, great things. The most important was this. It was in the fourth quarter. We're on the clock down. Kendall Milton gets the ball. The offensive line stops blocking because they think he's going to go down. He does not go down, although five Georgia Tech players are trying, mm-hmm. attempting, dragging to, people, just dragging people. They then garner up with him and start pushing him down. And the man walks away from that scrum. Mm-hmm. No limp, 
no, no. pain in the face, no. no no shortness of breath, no hanging of the arm. This man is fully, and I mean fully healthy and ready to go. And when he is, when he is right, there is not a running back, hear me, in the nation like him. It sure as heck ain't Jason McClellan. I'll tell you that Ooh. right now. Um, he's Ooh. RB1 on this team. He is, um, he's got it all. He's got the moves. He's got the power. Yeah. He's got the yeah. burst. He's got the acceleration. He's got the top end speed and he finishes a run. Oh, it is something magical. special to behold. It it's is magical, magical to behold. Um, on a night where number one, Carson Beck, I didn't think played his best game as he a Georgia not. Bulldog. Number Statistically, two, nor eyeball test. He did not. Number two, Georgia's two best playmakers at pass catcher were not ready to go in this game. Brock Bowers nor Lad McConkey were able to give it a go. Kirby said, "Why don't you just why don't you just throw throttle that down? Why don't we just number three? Yeah, the Kirby. Oh, yeah, Kirby. Oh, oh. Don't don't do that, oh. Kirby. We num we said before the game. We texted each other when we found that out. We said this is a recipe." for ugliness it's bad juju is what it is it's bad juju it's like russian three when it's thir fourth and goal from the 31 auburn fan line. auburn fan you wonder why you hate life it's your own fault it's like it's fourth and goal from the 31 yard line. every literally literally he could Every, have done it on the pre, on the play right before that, but he's such an idiot. He ran five yards down the field and then tried to back up past the line of scrimmage and throw it. All right. Um, Gosh, Auburn. On worst. a night where all of those things were happening, the offensive line, I don't think, played its best game, its most cohesive game. It was a fine and game on a night when the ball was bouncing all manner of ways. Now, a questionable whistle? Sure. But you're not going to hear the people on this podcast talking about a questionable whistle Please against Georgia that. Tech. Stop it. Stop. Stop it. All right. On a night where all that stuff was happening, Kendall Milton was like a soothing calming balm for the just, soul you just and you know who, you know who told you to put the bomb on yeah um everybody father of ballers i think told us to put the bomb on and so we put the bomb on and we did that's listen kendall milton was absolutely sensational there's another offensive player oh my god we need to get to we're gonna I'm get gonna to him i'm gonna say ridiculous things i'm gonna say come to tee up clinton and then i'm just gonna step back because he's got some things to say and then we need to talk about the defensive side of the ball and then we got a big announcement at the beginning of the third segment and so stay tuned for all of that but first this This is, in fact, game time. Dan and I love game time. When I say we love game time, it's because of this. We literally need it. I think it. it's actually eBay Motors. It, I think game time is coming up next. So let's we love them. switch over to eBay we Motors. We also Real quick. love eBay. You know we why do. we love eBay? Because why our 94 mm -hmm. Honda, our 99 Honda, our 03 Honda, it doesn't matter which they one we running have. running like a dream. They are running. Right. And do you know why they keep running like a dream, mm -hmm. Daniel? Because you get the right part for them. And you put it in do. there. You get it uh -huh. at a great price. Uh -huh. You do it. You do the work yourself. Put it in honest day's work. Be able to turn this car around, sell it for a healthy profit. Used car healthy. prices right now uh, what are they through doing? the roof. Yeah. They're going through the roof. So you go to eBay Motors. You get the exact yes. right part that you need for your car. Whether it's the car that you're driving around every day or whether you've got a little investment piece there and you're fixing it up, getting it ready back to get on the road and sell. Uh, whatever you need, eBay Motors has the exact right part for you. Guaranteed fit for U.S. customers. You go there, you, pu you put in the make and model of your car, and that way every part that you select, there's no more guessing, there's no, no. more wondering, there's no more questioning whether or not it's going to fit. It is the right part, the right fit at the right price. It's guaranteed to fit. Um, uh, that's the eBay Motors guarantee. Go to ebaymotors.com and get the right price for your vehicle on the right part that that is guaranteed to fit only at ebay motors ebaymotors.com all right daniel let's talk about another offensive player because this offensive player i'm gonna let you know um it, he he does it all when i say all i mean what doesn't he do you give me a, a statistical category on offense mm, okay okay a skill okay, okay. A position okay 
And I ask you, has anybody else in this offense done what he has done where he has tallied a mark in each one of those categories? And the answer is no. Running the ball? Sure. Mm -hmm. Being the third back in a backfield and then becoming the second back in a backfield to carry and tote the rock. Sure. He's done that becoming an all world pass catching sideline, grabbing radius inducing what absolute monster. What is he doing on some of these catches on the sideline? Clint? I mean, I'm talking about, I know that there was a little bobble and so it was called like sure. a little play down the sideline. The fact that he pulled that ball. In. The fact that at first you thought, Oh, hot dang. Look at that catch. Um, Dylan Some of these Bell. catches Dylan Bell is making on the sidelines, y'all are, they are sensational. He is, he is, he is thick when mm -hmm. taking a hit. The dude just don't back down. He he does not shy away from oh, contact. He's a physical runner. Physical runner. He he, he gets his special nose. teams. I, I was he, just gonna say, how about returning kicks? So let's go ahead oh, and do that, uh, Dylan. Uh -huh. Why don't you get you quite, some there? Quite nicely, mind you. What about what about? A willing block? Is he a willing blocker out on the perimeter, Clint? Does he get he takes, does he get his nose in there, mix it up a little bit? He takes joy and mm -hmm. joy, much like somebody else who he reminds me of. Now there's joy. a comp that you texted me, and I just it took my it took my breath away. I got a little short, I got a little lightheaded, had to sit down immediately. Yeah. And I thought Clint's way out of line here. And then uh -huh. I thought about it. Uh huh. And then I kept thinking about it and I thought, you know what? I don't hate it. He's getting a lot of Debo Samuel love right now, which, okay. Because Debo Samuel is kind of that guy in the sure. NFL right now for the San Francisco 49ers, um, which by the way, that's not a bad comp to have if you're going to no. get comped no. to a guy in the NFL. But that's not the guy that you say he reminds you of. You went a little bit further back, Clint. I went in the way back machine just a all little right. bit more to another guy who is willing to do the little things, who didn't want to get all the statistical anomalies, even though he did, who didn't care if you were asking him to pass touchdowns or to receive them or to block or to get in the middle going across against linebackers. It didn't matter because Heinz Ward did whatever you asked him and could do whatever you asked him because he was gifted at everything. And that is who Dylan Bell reminds me of the stature, the physique, the skill set, the willingness, the absolute nose for being a footballer is insane. So I, I, this is overreaction and, and, and maybe, maybe I'll go. I don't actually, I think this is my most calm overreaction yeah. take of all time. You know what the, you know what the glaring, striking similarity between Dylan Bell and Heinz Ward is, What's is that? that there is nothing about them that you can look at and point yes. to and say, that's what makes them so good at football. It, is it, that you know, you got guys five. like, you, like go back to Kendall Milton. Like sure. look at all the things <laughs> that we look at about Kendall Milton. Yeah. That's what makes him so good. Go to Brock Bowers. What makes him so good? Well, he's got amazing hands. He's he's the best route runner for his size that has ever played college football. Like, yeah, you can't look at something about Dylan Bell and go, oh, that's the thing that he's really dominant and just like Heinz Ward. And yet he was just so dang good at everything that he just kept doing well at everything that he did. Yep. That's exactly who Dylan Bell is anywhere you put him on the field anything that you ask him to do and um it's an emerging star in this georgia wide receiving core yes. i'm talking about i mean not just for the rest of this season which is going to be incredibly important depending on the status mm -hmm. of lad mcconkey moving forward um incredibly important but you look ahead to next year come on when mcconkey's gone and brock bowers is gone and marcus rosemey is gone and you're wondering, okay, which of these wide receivers is going to step up and assume the mantle of the go-to guy? Well, Dylan Bell looks like he is a front runner for yeah. that um, for that position. So, yeah, I love Dylan Bell. I love everything that he brings to this team. I thought Dom Lovett had another great game today. Fantastic I think he's game. continuing to ascend uh, the the depth of of weapons at pass catcher. And this is what I was kind of, you know, we're going to talk about the defense in the next segment. And Alabama fans will be keen to hear us talking about the defense because the defense is Ooh. the defense is not good. It's not great. OK, we could quibble or quabble can, about whatever. Good. It's not great. The defense yes. isn't great. <laughs> yes. Um, You can't beat Georgia, though. Like you just because here's the deal. 
And Alabama, yeah. I'm talking to you directly. No, specifically, you can't beat Georgia. It's, it's okay, just though. not in the cards. It's okay. Yeah, I know this is new for you, Bama fan. I, well, I get it's it. not that new. It's been around for well, for a what minute. What I'm about now. to say is new. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You're you're just like literally every other opponent we has, we have faced mm. for thirty times in a row. Yep. You're you're just like them. Mm-hmm. You are more of a peer to Missouri, Ole Miss, Ole Miss. I'm not sure you're a peer to Missouri. If I'm going to be totally honest with everyone here. I would need to see Missouri play New Mexico State oh, no. for me to know for sure how Alabama would match up against Missouri. So, um, Kentucky, sure. These are this is now your That's neighborhood. The group that you that you live in. Okay, it's just we that we don't. live in a different place, which is fine. Which You're going to score on this Georgia defense. Sure. You're going to. You're, and Milro is going to outrun linebackers right. and safeties. We're going to talk about it this week. We're going to break down that game. We're going to give our thoughts on that. But the, the Georgia is, defense is suspect. It will be scored upon. It will give up plays that will just make you infuriated, infuriated as a Georgia fan. But you can't keep up with this Georgia offense. Like, no one can. You can't do it. The depth of weapons that we have, the play of the offensive line, the play of the quarterback, the play calling of Mike Bobo, Mike it's, Bobo. it cannot be stopped. Like, there's no one in college football no. that is going to stop this Georgia offense. Sorry, this not sorry. Without, like, Tate sorry. Ratledge, Brock Bowers, and Lad McConkey, three undisputed starters and premium players at their positions on the offensive side of the ball key contributors and they don't go it doesn't matter it just doesn't matter this georgia offense has been without players all season it doesn't matter they can't be stopped it is um it's truly a thing to behold do y'all remember what happened to old miss when we were when we were peaking okay that's what's going to happen to you this week it's it's a tough scene, but I think you're here for it. I think you get it. All right. We've got something to give away. Trust We've got, process. and we're going to talk about the, um, the Georgia defense. And so it's a reason to stick around and it's a reason maybe to just quit the pod early. It, we'll leave the choice entirely up to you. No, no, come back. But come on back right after. Big announcement. Now, Clint, now you can tell them. You can yell at me all you want, but game time doesn't yell at me. Their customer service is out of fantastic. bounds Second amazing they're fantastic we had a couple of uh, questions for them we were out of game time because we needed last minute tickets to a kentucky game and they came through for us with absolute sparkling customer care as well as easy app game time is where you go to get last minute tickets to concerts venues races matches sporting mm-hmm. events whatever you need game time is it download the game time app today use promo code locked on college for twenty dollars off your first order that's right it's pretty simple game time.co or download the app use promo code locked on college twenty dollars off whether you need to get to the sec championship game which if you do go to game time they're going to be the cheapest that's the place again to go. all the the algorithm of matrices mm-hmm. that that there we alluded to last week. There it is. Josh, by the way, never heard from you. Never heard. Never heard from you, Josh. Never heard. Also, he didn't go fishing. He did not take the week off. He didn't go fishing. He doesn't have an algorithm matrices. But if there was one for cost, Daniel and I did it for tickets. Mm-hmm. Game time's the cheapest. Right now, promo code locked on calls, $20 off. Game time. Download the app today. Welcome to the third segment. Welcome to the 199 loyal third segment <laughs> listeners. Um, Did you really quick the 199 quick little if you're here, if you're part of the third segment, you are officially 199. We call and, you the 199. That's the that's and the, where we got that is there was a a often mentioned lunatic of a sports yep. guy who mm-hmm. just runs his mouth. Barstool. Um, he's barstool. So again, run mouth barstool mm-hmm. bro. Got it. Did you see the rant he had this week, Daniel? I, I tried not to. Okay. I tried not to see it. It was any. all of the, he's a more, it comes from him because he said there's only probably 199 people listening to the podcast. The 199, far stronger than that. Love y'all you. is why we do this podcast is for y'all. So we have a special little gift for you. We have a special little insight just for you listening. SEC right championship now. week. We thought, we thought what better time 
to reward the people. This has been the best year of the podcast ever. And Hands so um, uh, Clint right now got the uh, got the home field sweatshirt on. I also happen to have the uh, the home field sweatshirt on. Separate sweatshirt. Equally comfortable, though. I mean, some of my favorite apparel uh, that is that is made uh, is comes from home field. Our good friends over at home field. And we are giving away a seventy five dollar home field gift card to 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 a lucky listener. We're going to make the announcement the Monday after the SEC championship game. So you've got about a week. To get um to get entered to win the seventy five dollar home field gift mm-hmm. card and it's super simple, all right? What there's only do? two. There's only two things that you have to do okay. to make sure that you're entered. You have to be subscribed to the audio and the YouTube. Okay, okay. so just on any audio platform of your choosing, just subscribe the YouTube channel. Subscribe, do that, and then to enter, you just have to send us an email at lockdownbulldogs at gmail.com lockdownbulldogs at gmail.com just send us an email that says entering the home field gift card home field entering contest 199 whatever you want send us an email that will be your entry and as long as you're subscribed to both the youtube channel and the audio podcast then you will be eligible to win we will announce the winner the Monday after the SEC championship game. So if you're listening to this, you are invited to enter. We wish you all the best of luck. Um, uh, send us an email to enter lockdownbulldogs at gmail.com. All right, Clint. Yes. I'm going to let you go first. We're going to talk about the Georgia defense because okay. I need to hear you say the things that you feel like need to be said. And then okay, here, I'll talk. Here's what needs to be said. This is the most inexperienced defense Kirby Smart has ever played with in his entire coaching career. Full stop. And the reason I say that, two positions of note. Inside linebacker being number one. Inside linebacker is a major deficit right now in which Georgia fans, as well as Kirby Smart, has been accustomed to this. Now, I say the most inexperienced because, again, look at how Kirby Smart, I've said this the whole entire season. This is, he doesn't do this to the offense. And when he does have to talk to the offense, offensive linemen, or if there's somebody that makes a boneheaded play, gets a penalty, he is quick and direct with them. With the defense, he is soft and he's more fatherly. And he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's, he's like patting the helmet and he's not yelling at him. There's no cussing. It's, it's come over here. Let's, let's hang out. It's because he knows they're so, so young and so, so immature as it pertains to experience. That's the first thing I want to say. Second thing, it changes his whole entire coaching trajectory. Second thing, it's not a lack of talent that this defense has a problem of. And there are problems, it, it, admittedly. It is a lack of eye discipline and play recognition that comes only from time and nothing else. Literally nothing else. Film study time, doing hours and hours and hours of play recognition. So I'll say this. Does the defense have some weak points? Yes, it does. However. Each and every game, I don't know why this is, and I don't know how it's going. I I wish I knew the secret sauce of this. Do we start off dookie, and do we shore it up by the end? Yes, we do. Is it a lack of physicality, lack of talent? No. Is it a lack of immaturity and experience? Yes, it is. 100%. I think this defense is fine. I am not scared about it because I've seen them in in these situations. Glenn Schumann, Kirby Smart, not giving too much out on film to be able to coach them up well in the biggest environments against the biggest teams again on the biggest stage and come away fine with it. Now, I say all that to then say CJ Allen took a giant step back this game. Holy geez. He looked as though this was day one at fall camp out there against Georgia Tech. I mean, wide-eyed. wide-eyed. Dear headlights, hello. I, I was very disappointed to see that. The lack of development and growth, and specifically him, has me majorly concerned because I've I've given up on number two. I, I, I'm sorry. Fans, if you're a number two fan, if you're a sm- I, good for you, you can hold down that side of the fan club. I won't be. I've given up on him. CJ is it until JDJ is healthy if jdj is healthy if i'm talking about all right i agree with a lot of the things that you said there i don't agree with everything i'll get to that in a second but i do agree with a lot of the things that you said there and um 
I think, though, ultimately how we get to the point that we're at is less important to me than the fact that we're here. Georgia is at the point where the defense is just really substandard. And you saw late in the game when one stop wins the game after another crazy goal line turnover <laughs> where Georgia Tech gets the ball with 80 yards to go and they just march down the field and decimate our defense in the fourth quarter with nothing unusual, nothing that we haven't been looking at all game long. And some of the worst tackling I have ever seen from a Georgia defense in my life. And that's the only point that I will disagree with you. I think this defense lacks physicality, and I think it fundamentally lacks a toughness that we are used to seeing in a Georgia defense. Now, I, I'm not saying that the defense is soft or always looks soft. I am saying that the defense has a propensity to show up soft in certain moments of, of virtually every game that we play this season. I, I don't necessarily know where it comes from or what the you know what the the factors are that lead to it I'm again I'm not as concerned about it I am concerned that there is not an inside linebacker on this team that is healthy right now that I even remotely trust against hmm. anyone in the hole running the football <laughs> like Raylan Wilson, I thought at some point, at a point in the game, was going to become that guy for me. And I was just going to take up the, well, CJ Allen is falling off a cliff. And so I'll just become a Raylan Wilson fan. And then at the end of the game, he folded just like everybody else. They put in Jalen Walker at the end of the game, and he looked terrible just like everybody else. There's no depth at inside linebacker. No. Which is why after the two starters, Smile and pop after those two guys you got two true freshmen you're not going to Xavier sorry you're not going to Jalen Walker that's a problem that's not how Kirby Smart recruits he doesn't no. recruit guys to get skipped in the line like that's a that's a problem I don't want to use the word failure but like that is a deficit in the defense when you start seeing guys Ve like whole classes of players at a position get skipped in the order. And let's call a spade a spade. They're not getting skipped because it's Nicholas Chubb over there on the sidelines, no. passing them on the depth chart. Like that's not why they're getting skipped. They're getting skipped because they're not ready to play. Dale and Everett, we know is a weakness on this defense. Today, the safeties. We're absolutely out of position constantly, time and time again. And the and all of a sudden, the whole middle of the defense <laughs> becomes a real problem where it does not take an offensive genius to scheme up ways to get us out of position and looking really foolish really easily. Now, this entire week, I'm going to give you I, nothing Daniel just said, by the way, except for the physicality standpoint, we can disagree on that. But everything else I agree with. And I'm going to come back, Bama fans, and you might be jumping for joy because you're saying, oh, we're a physical running team with an incredible, talented quarterback. Jalen Milrow. Jalen Milrow going to just score at will. Well, he's a moron with the decision making. So there's point one. Yeah. Point two. I'm about to tell you why the teams that had success against Georgia all year, Alabama does not fit a single mode at all of those teams. And I'm going to tell you why I'm not scared at all. We're going to give up some points to Bama, but not enough. But you're going to give up 40 to Georgia. And so you're going to score 40. No, let me score 40. The answer is no. The answer is no. Uh, he is Daniel. I am Clint. This is Locked on Bowl. This has been Overreaction. We're going to come back on Monday, talk all about the SEC Championship leading up to it. Come back, 199. Don't forget to get on over, email us, subscribe to both YouTube as well as the audio, and we will see you all later. See ya.